Hi, this episode is sponsored by our friends Raycon. Raycon provides innovative earbud designs at prices that don't break the bank. And they are an everyday necessity for me. Super nice for every time I fly on a plane. Super nice for when I'm working out. I had them at the gym last night. Great for working from home. Great for not bothering your roommates while you listen to podcasts, music, whatever. You can also use them for phone calls. Makes it easier to stay connected. Raycons are the best way to listen. Great sound, comfortable fit, noise isolating, long battery life and no dangling wires. Look at that demo ranch. That's pretty cool, right? I like to use them because you can unplug from screens. For instance, you can listen to that YouTube video podcast you've been wanting to listen to while you work out. Or you can listen to the news instead of watching it while you're making dinner. While you're getting other things done, you can have these and still be catching up on all the stuff that you like to keep up with. Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, more compact design, and more comfortable fit. Raycon has a 45-day free return policy. Raycon was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Brandy, and Mike Tyson are obsessed with Raycons. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash off the range to get 15% off your order. Raycon earbuds start about half the price as other premium earbud brands, but they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. Raycon offers their earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options. Hey. Matt from the future, uh, I actually finished recording this video, which you're about to watch. It's a great one, by the way, and then I remembered, I forgot to tell you, if you're gonna be in Indianapolis anytime soon, I'll see you there. I'll be there. I will be in Indianapolis May 1st at Cletus and Cars, running the El Cromino with possibly a little, uh, little trick up my sleeve. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Oh, this isn't, the, you guys are at the start of the video, so this would be, welcome to Off the Ranch. Welcome to Off the Ranch. I've got a fire truck. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, actually, so far it's just an LMTV with a flatbed. But I'm hoping that after today's video, I will have a fire truck. I ordered some things. They just came in. They're pretty awesome. Let me show you. This is my 1998 LMTV. It's uh, Stewart and Stevenson's is the company that makes it. Designated as a M1078. It is a two and a half ton. They had five tons that looked just like this, but had a back axle and were longer. My five ton is a 91. This was the trucks that came after. They used them for carrying a bunch of troops, carrying a bunch of cargo. All the supplies that they needed, they put on the back of these things, and these things can go anywhere. All wheel drive, air brakes, giant tires, big old trucks. Now these are cab overs, which my five ton is not, but these 1078s were all cab overs, which means they don't have a engine that sticks out out here like the five ton does. You can see it's straight and the engine is up underneath where you sit. It is up in there. It has a six cylinder cat engine diesel turbocharged engine and it's a cab over and it looks a little in my opinion not as cool as a five ton but it was done for a reason it's so these things were shorter they kind of compact the cab and the engine all together and that they were like i think they cut off like three or four feet of room so they could pack more of them in cargo on ships or whatever they could stack these things they also have a better turning radius because they're just not as long and as big i bought this truck from a fire department the fire department used this thing as a wildland fire a brush truck and they would go out putting fires out in places that a normal fire truck might not be able to get to so they needed something with big off-road tires and four-wheel drive. Before that, it was a military truck. It was painted tan. This one was tan. I can see some tan paint left, but the fire department went through and repainted everything, cleaned it all up, made it white. Yeah, there's tan paint right there. So it's starting to come through the white. There's some tan paint left. So it was a military truck, then it was a fire truck, and I will continue life as a fire truck, ideally, if everything works out today. Check out what I got. I bought a big tank. Here is more tan paint. This is where they had their tank and equipment before, and so they painted everything around it but didn't paint this. I need to paint this. Probably shouldn't put the tank on there. The tank is already on there and strapped down and full of about 100 gallons of water because our well was out at our house yesterday. And so went ahead and hooked this thing on here really quick, and then I hooked some fittings together here to make it hold water, and I drove it to the big house on the hill, we'll say, and and uh, filled it up with our well there because we have running water there. So filled it up so we could use it at this house for washing hands and dishes and stuff like that. So it does have a little bit of water in it right now. Now we have our well working here so I don't need this here as our water truck anymore. It's time to turn it into a fire truck. I ordered a bunch of things that I'm gonna try to piece together. I've never built a pumper truck before 
And so I just kind of guessed on everything I need. I'm a little worried about some things, like if the pump is gonna be like enough, like enough pressure to do what I want. I don't know. I bought the biggest tank that I thought made sense. It is a 550 gallon water tank. And one gallon of water weighs 8.3 pounds times 550 is 4,500 pounds. This is a deuce and a half, a two and a half ton, which means the two and a half tons is 2.5 times 2,000, 5,000 pounds, which means that I'm at 4,500. I've got 500 pounds to spare, assuming this thing is all the way full, which I don't have to fill it all the way up. I might just put like, you know, 500 gallons or 450 gallons or something in there. Leave a little bit of room so it's not like super heavy. We'll see. But that leaves 500 pounds to spare. That we need to count the tank in that weight and the hoses and then my engine and pump that will be back here. It's, it's actually pretty small. We should be well under even if this thing's totally topped off because the engine is kind of small. I am concerned that I bought too small of an engine and a pump. I'll show it to you. It is crazy to think about though that that thing when completely full weighs 4,500 pounds. That's not very small. Okay, I have, I think that was 100 feet of hose. That's two and a half inch hose. I've got a, a nozzle here and then a bunch of fittings here. I like picked and choose every single fitting to make this work. And so I like, there's a lot of guesswork because I've never done this before. And then I have this engine. This is a Honda engine with a little pump on it. 8,120 gallons per hour. It has big old fittings on this pump. It has two inch fittings. It's not like a high pressure two inch. So I'm hoping that when I neck down to one and a half and then with this, maybe I'll be able to control. I'm, I'm a little worried this is gonna be too small of a pump to actually get any flow out of this. Or maybe I need to get a smaller hose and sprayer for this size pump. I don't know. The only way to find out is to like put it together and try it. I thought about getting like a bigger pump, but I, I mean, they get to like $3,000 really quick. This one is way, way lower than that. It's under a thousand. I think it was like $450 or something. So I decided to try a cheapish pump first. I don't know. I'm just gonna throw it all together and see what happens. I don't know. It just seems small. All right. I feel like it looks large because it's in front of the tank. It also looks large because it's above my head. It's also good that it's small though because I just had to lift this above my head to get on here and it's, it's not heavy, but like putting stuff above your head. I don't know. We'll see. Also, for those who have built a fire truck or for firefighters out there who know about this kind of stuff or for someone who's just built your brush truck, let me know if I'm doing anything wrong. That you're like, oh, I'm gonna save Matt some grief. He needs to do this because I totally guessed on everything and I'll walk you through every piece that I have for this. But I was sitting on the internet just guessing. I was doing a lot of research. I was like trying to look at other brush trucks and what they've done. I don't know. Starting off with tank placement, I put it here in between the two axles. It's closer to the back axle because I figured that one's also carrying the weight of the whole cab, the engine, everything up there. But I put it a little bit you know, forward from this back axle and then I'm gonna have my hoses and my pump and everything right there hanging off the back so I can get to it easy. But do you think that was the best place to put this? It's not hooked down besides straps right now. I can easily move it and I am gonna eventually permanently mount it, like weld up some things here that hold those little legs. But for now, it's just strapped. I'm gonna try it and see how I like it here. Some other things I already learned. Uh, I actually bought all this. I was just trying to think like, okay, I need a hose to go from tank to pump and then a hose to go from pump to nozzle, and then we're good to go. But then I also was like, oh, I need a valve. So I had to like go back and order a valve because I wasn't thinking that, yeah, I probably want to keep this off when we're not actually pumping because it might have leaks. But check this out. Aha! So this is a two inch hose, and these are pretty cool. So this is a cam lock system. Let me show you how this works right here. These are just little pins to keep it in. But ugh, that's how you unlock it, and then it comes right out. So it has a little male and a female end. Push it together, much easier with two hands. Clamp those ugh, down, and then these little pins go in here so it doesn't unclamp by itself. Pretty sweet, that's called cam lock. I knew nothing about that, started researching it, and I was like, yeah, that. It's cool, so that one is solid. These are just screwed in, these have threads. I decided to go with cam lock in case I need to take any of it off for any reason. So I have cam lock on everything. This will cam lock into a cam lock fitting that goes onto this so that I can easily take this hose off, move it if I want. The thought there is you can use this pump to flow backwards in case like we need more water quickly. I can go stick this hard hose, See, this is a floppy hose, so you can't do suction through a floppy hose like that. This one you can do this, and we are using suction, so this will be sucking water to the pump 
from the tank. So this is a suction hose, but also I could take this suction hose and stick it in a lake or a water source or something if I needed to fill this thing up with lake water, I think. So that's why I use cam lock so I could take this off, switch it, and pump it in differently. I, I don't know, but that's also why I needed a valve so I could you know, close this off, take this hose off. I'm talking too much. Let me show you what else I got. This is the m gas tank. This is a motor. This is the pump. The motor turns a pump, pump moves water. I think the water comes in through this one and out through that one. Not actually sure about that, but I bought a, another cam lock female to screw onto that. I'm probably gonna need to put some thread sealer on that. And then this male from the tank will go there, clamp in. Then I got a reducer to go down to our one and a half inch hose here from this two inch fitting here. Does it fit? Yes, good to go. And then this one and a half inch cam lock screws onto that. I'm gonna come back and tighten all these actually like right with some thread sealer on there too. But that's what I'm thinking. So it pumps tank, this goes around me because I didn't know how long I needed it. So I got like a too long of one. Comes in here, pumps water in, squirts water out. That end of that red hose cam locks under there. And then the other end will cam lock onto my nozzle and spray stuff. Probably not as fast as I want it to spray. I just have a feeling I'm gonna be disappointed. Here's what I'm hoping I'm okay. So that thing says 8,120 gallons per hour, 8,120 gallons per hour divided by 60 would be 135 gallons per minute. This nozzle, this, this nozzle goes on the end of this valve. This nozzle said, well first it's called a Viper Black Knight. That name couldn't be any cooler. It says 95 gallons per minute. So this is saying my pump should pump more than 95, should pump more than my nozzle, which is good, right? I don't know, I mean, I don't know. We're just gonna have to find out, guys. <laughs> I'm freaking nervous I'm gonna have to send this back or just buy another one, I don't know. I'm nervous. Two, discharge, discharge fitting. Three, suction fit. I got him. I got him backwards. Okay, so water goes in there. This is hard with one hand. There, and water comes out here, Ugh, I think. Can you please explain how the system works? Yeah. All right. So the water comes out of that tank, then it goes around the screen, then the pump makes it speed up, then it goes wee Perfect. Okay, I think it's time to try it. I've got gas in it, oil in it. Everything I think is hooked up correctly. Let's turn the water on. So it should start, I think, running from there to there. I don't think I need to prime it because there should be enough water that it fills up in here. The priming is if you are pulling water from down under the pump. This is how you prime it here. I hear air coming out. Oh, I hear water flowing. Oh, and we got a leak here. So I'm gonna say our pump's primed. I'm gonna turn it on and see what happens. Looks like I need this thing to be facing this way so that I can... Oh, that thing's not even on there. What the heck? It just slipped off, that's why we're leaking. That might not work. This is a suction hose, so it's not like it's high pressure, but it should be. Dang it, that's annoying. Already problem. I'm just gonna turn it on and see what happens. It's just suction, so it should be all right. But I need to start it, let's see. Gas is on, choke is on, I think. I'm gonna have to get up there and start it. Later I need to make this so I can start it from the ground. That'd be ideal. Let's see. So I didn't even see this, we're leaking on a, oh, it's not tight, that's why. Okay. Yeah, I need to unwind. Okay, this is the problem with a hose like this. I should have got a hose that's like hard, 
like a water hose but can't crimp and I need to get a hose reel because right now we have a big mess. I'm gonna stretch it all out, we'll try it again. We have the hose all stretched out now. We're gonna try it again, see if we can make it work. Hold one hand down here. Yep. Okay. Hold it tight. Now open it up. <laughs> <laughs> do it again, do it again. No. You can do it. <laughs> All right, I turned the pump down so it's not gonna be as powerful for him. Hey, you can just open it a little bit too. Turn it up. I'm gonna turn it up to see how it is. That works super well. That's like a hundred foot hose, and I think the hose would be fine if I had a hose reel. So it's not gonna be all like bunched up. If I had a hose reel, I can roll it all up. Whenever I roll it out, it will work. The problem though with this hose is you have to be completely rolled out to work. So maybe I should get a like rigid hose. Real rigid, firm and rigid. Um, let me know what you think. I'm super happy with that pump. That is pumping out plenty of water to put out the kind of fires I'm gonna be putting out. And we have 100 feet of hose, so I should be able to walk along and get everything sprayed that I want. One thing that would be nice though is if there was a way I could have like a short hose up here, because my hose is just too long, you know what I mean? So it'd be nice if I could like just spray from the back of the truck, if I just had like a small little fire that I wanted to put out from up here so I didn't have to unroll 100 feet of hose before I fire everything up. So, I may try to figure out a way to put a Y in that. I don't know if that's good, but I think it should be fine. Maybe just a Y and a valve, so I only have the water going one direction. This thing bolts down, so I'm gonna drill holes in this eventually after I figure out where I want it, because that thing does move a lot, but it came with little rubber grommets so I can bolt it down and it won't vibrate, won't move any. This thing is strapped for now. Sometime I'll make it more permanent as well. Just need to figure out where I want everything. I also really want this thing to be able to turn on from the ground if need be, just so I don't have to climb up. This thing is really high off the ground. It's like uh, six feet off the ground probably. And so I would like for the on off switch and the throttle controls to all be accessible from the ground. So I can just like have a hose reel here, pull out the hose, crank this thing up and go. Also that valve will normally stay closed to make sure we don't have any leaks because stuff does just kind of drip with time. So that valve will stay closed, but the problem is I have to get up to open that valve. So maybe I hard pipe it, wherever this thing ends up sitting, I hard pipe it over to the side and have a valve right next to the wall so that I can just turn it on and off and start everything up from the ground. I'm just trying to make this thing like as user friendly as possible. And it'll probably go through several iterations. I actually really like doing plumbing stuff like that chicken coop over there has all custom rainwater collection. They went through like four different iterations where I would try something and realize what I could do better and I would improve upon it over like a year. This fire truck will probably be that way as well. Definitely 100% looking for input from you guys. So please put it in the comments. I will be reading them because uh, this is my first. I know it's not ideal and I want it to be ideal. And so let me know if you're like Matt, Throw away this stupid red hose, it's no good. Matt, you need to get these kind of clamps on here to keep that suction hose hooked on well. Matt, get rid of cam locks, those are the worst. Whatever, I don't, I don't know, I just saw cam locks online, they look cool, and uh, they seem to be working fine. I'm also gonna be doing some testing with this thing to just see like how long it takes that pump to drain this. Like if it's drained in one minute, that's not good. I don't think it will, I think it'll last for like 10 minutes, so. Oh cool, it has numbers on the side, I didn't realize that. I don't know if you can see it, it says 300 gallon, 400 gallon. So there's gonna be a lot of trial and error, seeing also how long the gas tank, like maybe it won't drain this big water tank very fast, but that little bitty gas tank will drain in 10 minutes of running. I wouldn't think so, I bet that thing lasts forever. But if I'm putting out a fire, the last thing I want is to run out of fuel 
and then I have to go find gas and fill up my gas tank so I can put out my fire. If there's a big fire around, I don't really want to be messing with fuel. But what is kind of interesting, and you guys will think is cool, is this truck is a diesel, and you will see that is a big diesel tank right there, diesel only. But then you also see there's a filler cap right here that says unleaded only. This thing has been retrofitted with another fuel tank right here that holds gasoline because they use gasoline to power their pumps when they had this thing as a fire truck at the fire station. So I could plumb up to that and come around and wherever this thing dumps into the carburetor right there, just have my hose from my big gas tank dumping in there. If that little gas tank proves to be an issue. I don't know. So Demolisha, I need your help. What do you think about the fire truck build right now? What could I do better? What is perfect? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Off the Ranch, where we build us the Demo Ranch firefighting vehicle, Master Chief. Thanks for watching. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that? Number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare.